Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Sam Ivy the Ganji for the media speaks doing what you love, what you wait for. It is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show. And I'm going to say this I've never, ever had to give a Dunce Cap with a heavier heart. It's even voted on, it's that bad. There's not as many stories this time, but you will find that the, the ones we have are quite uh, quite outlandish, to say the least. The idiots, the dumbest, the truly, the stupidest people among us, all on one show. And we talk about them here. This is uh, from Alan Salazar. School bars a nine-year-old from wearing Make American Great Again hat. Now, you have to understand that for most people in the world, we'll get to more on this later, there are two parties. Two political parties. There is the Democrat and the Republican. Therefore, there's a roughly 50-50 chance that any given person is going to root for one of you know of the two options that most people see it as. So how is this offensive? The kid had a 50-50 choice and he didn't like Hillary. A school in California, which should lose all accreditation and uh, should be to have all of its public funds taken away barred a nine-year-old victim from wearing presidential candidate Donald Trump's trademark red hat featuring the words Make America Great Again. The Powers Ginsburg Elementary School in Fresno, who I am asking you, begging you, and imploring you to call and complain to, sent third grader Logan Autry home Thursday, claiming that the student's hat that he'd worn for three days in a row created a safety concern. I, I've said all along, the country is, the, the powers that be are trying to cheat the country from Ron Paul, uh, from uh, Donald Trump the same way they did Ron Paul. They're trying to do it all over again. There's nothing wrong with wearing a hat for a man that has a 50-50 chance right now of being the president. I mean, it's, it's so stupid, you shouldn't even have to talk about it. The vice president, vice principal came up to me and told me to take my hat off because it brings negative attention from other students. What good? They can go to hell. It's called free speech. But he said no a few times, and then the principal told him again, and he still said no and refused. Audrey's guardian, Angela Hoffenecht, told ABC30.com that the boy has been closely following the 2016 election and is pretty knowledgeable for a kid. Therefore, he's doing an amazing job. He is an absolutely wonderful American. He knows that the likes of Hillary Clinton are going to further destroy our country, and he gets punished for, punished for simply saying it. He knows more than I do, uh, Hoffa next said. He knows more about this election than I know. It's kind of embarrassing. You know, it's like, are you smarter than a third grader kind of thing? But he's adamant about his beliefs and his rights, and he wants to be a politician. That's his goal. For his part, Audrey, who studies politics and American history, has been touting the presumptive Republican nominee's talking points, and he's been telling people about illegal immigration, which is a problem, the Second Amendment, which we do have a right to carry arms, and the First Amendment, of course, which gives us the right to free speech, which they said he doesn't yet. Well, um, they're trying to make him take it off, trying to prevent the boy from speaking his own mind and from from using the brain that they claim they want you to use in school. But let's face it, I mean, even when I went to school, they do not want you using your brain in school. It is about programming and indoctrination. It is simply not about learning anything. You can take that, my friends, to the bank. Uh, moving on, this here brought to you by Sticker Junkie. When you go to Sticker Junkie, say, hey, I heard about uh, the correct views on checkout. I'm typing in correct views or the correct views. And this site here is going to give you the most amazing stickers that you have ever seen. And you're going to get even a further discount because you listen to, of course, the correct views. That brings us to one of the other donkey. Paul Joseph Watson writes, a leftist not sad about a two-year-old boy killed by an alligator because he's white. This is what we've come to in the country now. It doesn't matter if you are rich or poor, black or, or rich or poor, it doesn't matter if you're a little boy that hasn't done anything wrong. No, what matters is the color of your skin. 
Leftists and feminists took to Twitter to express the fact that they were not sad about a two-year-old boy being killed by an alligator at a Disney resort in Florida because he was white. This is the height of stupidity. This is how we get divided as a people, okay? This is how you start to lose your humanity because maybe you don't like someone else's culture. I hate hip-hop culture. I hate R&B music. But you know what? I don't hate black people. I don't care what color you are or how old you are. If you're being attacked by, attacked by an alligator, I'm probably going to risk my life and try to save you. You know why? Because you're a person. You're a human. You're alive. Okay, God gave you a life. I don't care what color you are. We've reached a, a, a depth here not seen since before the civil rights movement. And a lot of it is black people hating white people. Instead of recognizing, the article says, the horrible tragedy for what it was, social justice warriors, that is the never happy left, felt the need to inject their demented obsession with identity into the story, not sad because he's white. Feminist Bernie of Snarth, great humanitarian here, who has over 12,000 followers, probably wonderful people, I'm sure, said that she wasn't upset about the boy's death because he was white, commenting, I'm so finished with white men's entitlement lately that I'm really not sad about a two-year-old being beat being being eaten by an alligator because his daddy ignored the signs. Well, the problem here is you, lady, don't see color. You think you see color. You hate white people. But you don't have that spark of humanity anymore. That has been taken away from you because you have allowed yourself to be sucked into a left versus right, us versus them paradigm that doesn't really exist. In other words, there, the racism you think all around you isn't there. It's nowhere but inside you. Self-described feminist and salon contributor. You know, if, if you ever, if, if anybody you, you know in your family, if they ever drink poison, and um, some poisons you have to leave inside of you because if you vomit them up, it will make it worse. It will eat your insides out on the way up and it'll eat them up coming when you vomit. However, sometimes you are called to vomit. And if you ever know somebody that ingests poison, no matter what color they are, and you want to save their life and they have to puke, have them read Salon. And I promise you that is exactly what's going to happen. Self-described feminist and Salon bleh, contributor Mercy Bianco Thought it was necessary to take a swipe at the parents who bravely waded into the water to try to save their baby boy. Or, you know, maybe it was a parent's mistake. Maybe it wasn't. But the point is, so, listen to some of these tweets. Some white kid got ate by a gator, LOL. Oh, really? The gator didn't need him because he was right, white and unseasoned. And it goes on and on and on and on. White savages routinely use black babies as alligator bait. You know what? That is America today. That is the insane genius that is all around us. And you know why? Because if you're taught this way and you're a white person and a, uh, a black man has a great injustice done to them, you won't care. You won't step in. You won't do anything. Same thing goes the other way. Black people that hate me because they don't believe in white privilege are caught the BS that it is. If I was being attacked by an alligator, they wouldn't help me. Which is fine. I mean, I'm not saying that they have to, but I'm saying, yo, if there's not some part in you that can see that a two-year-old child getting eaten by an alligator has nothing to do with race, then you have quite likely gone so far down the rabbit hole that there's no hope for you at all. Guys, we got... Two stories left until we get to the big dumby, the golden dumby, the oh my god, I can't believe he won dumby. Daily Caller uh, has this Democrat Party platform calls for prosecuting global warming skeptics. What does that mean? The science has proven that man is not warming the planet. There is no anthropological climate change. There is more ice on the poles than there has ever been before. Ice ships get stuck going in to try to get other ships out. There have always been planetary shifts. 
there always will be planetary shifts. A lot of it has to do with that great big incandescent gas thing that we call the sun. Also, California for the last 2,000 years has always been a desert. It's going back to what it's always been. It has nothing to do with man. If that was the case, every place would be doing it. There has not been a substantial rise in the temperature of the Earth in between 15 to 17 years. You can look that up. NASA's own data shows it. But in order to tax you, in order to put taxes on your gas and taxes on your energy, in order to monitor you more closely in ways that benefit the elite, that make money for them in ways that I just said. Democratic operatives, it says, responsible for creating their party platform, that is what the Democrats believe, have unanimously, showing that they're all mad, adapted a provision calling for the Department of Justice to investigate companies who disagree with Democrats on global warming science. The trouble is it's not science, it's anti-science, it's lies. There is no global warming. Man is not warming the planet. Look up the writings of Lord Moncton. Like I said, you can see it on NASA's own data. A panel of Democrats voted Friday to approve the final draft of the party's platform to promote progressive Democratic values, which apparently includes investigating energy companies who misled shareholders. If you can't tell that this is a way to get into the shareholders, to get into these companies, and get their money and because a lot of these companies are donating to people like libertarians and uh in this regard republicans who are right on the issue um that's not to say they're right on every issue they're not um they're right on this issue so in order to try to siphon and suck some of that money away they're going to sort of beat down the opposition they're going to go ahead and uh, rough up the energy companies and make them cough up the money. And that's what this is about. The science is not on their side. Man is not, has not, and is in no way, shape, matter, or form warming the freaking planet. And that brings us to, friends, the dumb D of the day, brought to you right there by the Seacrest Motel. Won't you look? at the Seacrest. You're going to want to look at it because when you go to Cedar Point, that's where you're going to be staying. Don't stay anywhere else. They've got the best rates imaginable. You're right by within like a five minute ride of the park. It's where I stay personally. What you do is you go in and tell Vicky or her son, say, hey, I listen to the correct views, the guy with the long hair, and you're going to get a discount on top of the already discount that you get. They will save you hundreds, okay? It's $200 to stay at the Braves. Call the Seacrest. You'll be staying there for damn near nothing by comparison. And friends, that brings me to those you hear the dumb D, the dumb capital month, the hardest I've ever had to give. And let me highlight here William Burke. How about a dunce cap of the month for Gary Johnson? So I looked up why he would want to give a dunce cap to Gary Johnson. Now you can see my other show. Why would William Burke want to give a dunce cap to Gary Johnson? I voted for Gary Johnson last time. I was I was very happy and proud to vote for Gary Johnson. I interviewed his vice presidential candidate, Jim Gray, for a half hour on this very show. Go to the Oprah Radio. You can find it in Canton, Ohio. Tell Steve, hey, tell Tyrone Semper even. Do me a favor. I want to hear that. Um, correct views, talk to the vice presidential candidate for a half hour. Gary Johnson is wrong on NAFTA, outsourcing, which is why I'm not voting for him this cycle. And while I don't think he would be a terrible president, he has now officially won the Nuts Cap of the Month Award for saying that there is nothing criminal about what Hillary Clinton did. I've got it here in Libertarian Republic. I'm not a stone thrower when it comes to Hillary Clinton and her emails and her servers. He said, I don't think there has been criminal intent on Hillary's part. I don't see an indictment. No criminal intent. She shredded her emails, Mr. Gary Johnson. She deleted emails. 
She received emails that we know were of questionable classified nature and should not have been there. Some of them were later suspected to have been classified. We don't know because she broke the law, which is a crime. That's why they call it criminal. When she deleted them and lied about their existence, she set up her email server in a bathroom so that you and I and the rest of America couldn't really see what they were saying. We don't really know. We have to take her word for it. That's criminal, Gary Johnson. So might I say, have a good run. I hope you hit your 15% because I would like to see the libertarians in the debate. I'm not supporting you this time because you're wrong on NAFTA. But Gary Johnson, I'm sorry. The show is fair. You win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And here it is. This is going to be sent to you right here. It says, As someone who proudly voted for you in 08, this is the hardest Dunce Cap that this show has ever had to give. However, for failing to understand that deleting emails, setting up servers in bathrooms, at least when you're Secretary of State, and mishandling information that allowed both Russia and China to hack the USA for saying that that is not a crime. You, Gary Johnson, win the dunce cap of the month award. Um, right there it is. Here's his hat that I made. It's going to be sent to him. It says dunce. And uh, keep in mind, sensitive secrets dealing with um, weaponry, perhaps nuclear tactics, the way we're going to do battle against ISIS, these things have been hacked by Russia and China. If you don't believe me, look it up. And it happened because of her doing this, her not keeping it on a secured server. She was warned about it from people at the State Department at the time. She lied about not having a BlackBerry when you saw her with the BlackBerry and other pictures that were on flights that she claimed she didn't have her phone on. Matter. So here it is. There's Hillary Clinton. And behind her, of course, a Russian and a Chinese person. And here's what I wrote. The thought bubble where it says, seems safe and non-criminal to Gary. Yes, I am sending this and this to Gary Johnson. I'm also mailing out last month's Adults Cap of the Month Award with this. No, it did not get sent out yet because my printer died. It now works. It works because people let you donate. You donate by looking at my description and uh, hopping on Patreon. You can donate up to correct views at hotmail.com. Send me an email, put in donations for show, and I'll let you know where to send the money. All money that you give to me goes towards a better show. Lastly, don't forget, I'm giving away an ounce of silver. How? Look up uh, on um, Rice, Rice Priebus. Go to Rice Priebus on Twitter. Ask him why the correct views didn't get a media pass for the GOP convention. Take a screenshot of it and send it to me. I'll put you in a running to win an ounce of silver. Good night, friends. God bless.